To successfully be a self-employed business owner, which the majority of you listening to this are, you have to be comfortable with a level of stress that would destroy most people. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. Okay, I'm nervous about this episode. I'm just going to let you know this right off the bat, okay? And um, there would be people that would say, you know, don't tell them that. Um, But I always try to be so upfront with my audience, with my clients, Um, I never want to pretend that I know all the things or have it all together in areas that I do not. So my podcast episode today is about um, having dysregulated nervous systems, um, in particular for female entrepreneurs. And if you don't know what that is, I'm going to go knee deep (laughs) into trying to explain for you what I have been learning over the course of the last couple of years. So I've been wanting to do this episode for a hot minute because I have learned so much about nervous systems and about um, dysregulation, co-regulation, overactive nervous systems, um, hyper-awareness, all those things in the last couple of years, not through going to doctors, because I've not been to the doctor for this, um, but just through information on the internet. I mean, anymore, we have so much information available to us, right? And, um, And so do you guys ever like, find something that somebody says on the internet, maybe it's an Instagram post or something. And then suddenly you find yourself, you know, going to look at one comment that then sends you on this like rabbit trail of looking up information and Googling and finding things. And, um, and so that has kind of been my story just a little bit in the last couple of years when it comes to like nervous system (laughs) information. Um, So let me just say, I'm not a doctor. I probably don't know at all what I'm talking about. However, However, I do have some personal experience on this topic that I do believe is going to help someone here today. Okay. I just want you to know right up front though, that like, um, I'm still learning. And so before you at me on Instagram and correct something or, you know, make a snide remark on YouTube, just remember, like I'm putting it out there first. I don't know everything about this topic, but I'm also trying to model what I'm constantly telling the women that I coach. Like you don't have to know everything about watercolors. You just have to know more than the people who want a watercolor lesson from you, right? You don't have to know everything about, um, you know, dealing with eating disorders before you start helping other people who are, you know, experiencing and going through and working through eating disorders. And so those are just two like random ideas that popped into my head. But what I'm trying to say is like, I'm going to share with you what I know. And, um, and what I think can help some of you, because some of you, I guarantee you're listening to me right now. You have a very dysregulated nervous system and you don't even realize that is the constant state you have been living in for years. And this snuck up on me as well. And so now that I know what I'm feeling in my body, um, you know, I'm taking the steps, I'm taking some steps, I'm taking precautions to, to heal things and to shift things and to change things. So that's what we're talking about today. (laughs) Dysregulated nervous systems, not a real sexy topic, but I'm going to share with you what I know, what I think you should know and how it's connected to entrepreneurship. Okay. So, um, if you follow me on Facebook, um, where I do have the majority of my followers, even though I don't love Facebook as much as Instagram anymore. Um, if you follow me there, I shared a graphic yesterday that said to be successfully self-employed business owner, to be a successfully self-employed business owner, you have to be comfortable with a level of stress that would destroy most people. And I'm so sorry if you hear my dogs growling. Somebody just walked in the front door. Okay. Let me, so let me read that again. Cause I got abstracted. <laughs> Squirrel, to to successfully be a self-employed business owner, which the majority of you listening to this are, you have to be comfortable with a level of stress that would destroy most people. Okay. So listen, when I read that, first of all, it, um, I got like a little, like a little catchy catch, like a little something, something that I felt deep in my chest (laughs) where I was like, oh my gosh, like that, that is so true. Now listen to me. The, the Jennifer a decade ago, the 42-year-old Jennifer may have read that and gone, that's right. Nobody else could handle this kind of stress. You know, we we kick butt as business owners and we're wired for this, et cetera. The 52-year-old Jennifer knows that'll kick your ass if you're not careful. Can I say ass on my own podcast? I think we established back in January I can. Because while at one time I thought the level of stress that we have as entrepreneurs, as business owners... Um, you know, that that is, uh, you can kind of wear that like a medal. 
but then when I've now, when I am um, seeing how that level of prolonged stress for prolonged period of time, how it can affect the body, both in terms of like the physical body, but also like emotionally, um, I am no longer impressed by that statement, but also just, um, want to like read that because first of all, I want to affirm those of you who are entrepreneurs, you are under a lot of stress. I am under a lot of stress. The majority of us are surrounded by people who work traditional jobs. They work for other people. They work nine to five or nights or whatever, but they have somebody else who is responsible for paying them, right? If you're listening to this podcast and you like me are self-employed and you own a business, um, our life is just completely different. And just like we can't understand what it's like to still ask for, you know, paid days off and hope for a 2% raise every year, people who are not self-employed can't understand what we go through as self-employed business owners. Okay. So, um, so you can't expect them to be able to understand your level of stress. Now, with that being said, this is why I'm so insistent on you finding community. And this is not even my notes, but this is, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get started here. Find a community, find a mastermind to get into, find a group that is not a free Facebook group for the love of God. Find something where you, if you have to pay initially to get inside of a group with other like-minded women who are in a similar stage in business or who are all in the online space or whatever, so that you have people that you can talk to about this topic. Okay. And that, and by the way, it was um, a friend of mine that I met through a mastermind. Her and I started this conversation that has kicked off this podcast. And I want to say one more thing, and then I'm actually going to get started. I am thinking about breaking this into two parts. So I'm going to kind of just see where the Lord takes it here. Um, how long I gab, I was going to say gabber, how long I gabber, I don't think it's a word, how long I talk, and then we'll kind of see, but I'm guessing this could be a part two. Okay. So, all right, here's what I want you to know. Um, running a business as we all know, if you are a business owner, it's just, it's just stressful. It just is. Okay. And so it's very common for those of us that are business owners to be experiencing like high periods or periods of like high stress and anxiety. So, um, could be high periods, could be periods of high stress and anxiety. Okay. What happens is sometimes this like being super stressed, feeling super anxious, feeling super revved up, you know, those dopamine rushes from social media, those, um, uh, you know, the thrill of a launch or whatever, like when those feelings start to become chronic and, and you're no longer able to kind of come down from those like high periods of stress. And, and, and I said it again, <laughs> those periods of high stress. <laughs> I must have high periods on the main, um, and, and come down from those periods of like high anxiety when you can no longer come down from that. This is what can lead to a nervous system that is deregulated. Okay. Or you might hear people talk about it as like an overactive nervous system. Um, and, and I don't know the difference between the two and I'm not going to take the time to Google it. You can look that up. I'm sure there probably are differences in the two, but either way, that's what I'm talking about today. Um, because what can happen is if you, um, are in that high stress zone for long enough and, and, and there's no like quantifier, it's not like, oh, after 10 years, you're going to start, you know, having nervous system problems or, you know, 15 years or, or five months. Like there's, there's, it's, it's dependent upon your body, how your body responds to stress. It's, it's, it's dependent on so many things, but if you have a dysregulated nervous system, this can lead to so many other problems, including like adrenal fatigue. And I have, I'm coaching women right now in my mastermind with adrenal fatigue. And I can tell you that that sort of thing, if you are your business, like if your business is dependent upon you, if you need to be able to work in order to have dollars in the bank account, you can't afford to like veer into adrenal fatigue. You just cannot because that can take you out and it can take you out for an extended amount of time. Okay. So again, your nervous system be can become really dysregulated when you are experiencing, you know, periods where you just have a lot of high stress and high anxiety. Okay. So in recent years, here is what I have realized, because if you had read that to me, I probably, you know, years ago, I would have been like, Hey, yeah, I don't, I don't really relate to that, but here is what I have related to. And I didn't realize this is what I was experiencing. Okay. So in recent years, um, some little things started happening. I would say it was probably 12 or 14 years ago. And I've owned a business at this point for 24 years. In fact, I've owned several businesses. So I had my painting company from the year 2000 to 2017. Then um, let's see, I started coaching in the online space, coaching female business owners uh, almost 11 years ago. 
Um, Jason and I own um, three properties at this point. We sold one earlier this year. So we have three properties that we own. Two are Airbnbs. So that is a real estate business. Um, I have a VA service. That's part of my coaching. Um, we just launched a software <laughs> a year ago called Equip360. It's a marketing software. My husband owns Fairway Finest. So that's not my stress, but you know, you get kind of stressed by proxy. And so like, there's a whole, there's a whole lot going on there. Right. And so it was probably about 12 or 14 years ago. I started noticing something that I can only describe as this. I was getting shocks through my body, like a, a feeling of absolute, um, like a chill running up and down my spine, but not the type of chill when you're like scared by something in the movie, but it would be if I saw someone trip shock up and down my body. If Jason veered in traffic, shock up and down my body. It was like anything that, um, and, and it's gotten much better in recent years, but anything that alarmed my body physically or like made me fear for somebody else's personal safety, I had a, a physical body reaction to that where it was like someone had shocked me. It was like, it was like, I touched a battery up here. If you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing me, but then I felt the shock from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes and straight back up. And so when this started happening, I tried to explain how weird it was to Jason. And it's kind of a weird thing to explain, right? Cause I'm like, I'm feeling like I'm getting shocked. That feels weird. So how many of you have ever went to the doctor and you're like, okay, I know this sounds weird, but I have this you know, thing. And I just want to make sure that I'm not like dying of something. And, um, and it's not a problem. Right. So then what happens is then they start sending you to all these specialists and then there's all these tests and, and, and how many of you have ever had an experience like this where they come out of it and they're like, we don't know. And then you're like, okay, I was just foolish to go to the doctor in the first point, but I knew it wasn't normal. Okay. That was the first inclination that I had that I wonder if like, there's something going on with my nervous system. I wonder if there's something going on there. I did not connect the dots to this until like just a couple of years ago. Okay. But so that was, you know, quite a while ago, I started feeling like these physical shocks, which now I believe was, is, and, and it'll still happen on occasion, not very often. Um, but it has to do with my nervous system in recent years, he, totally different thing. And I, this is what I think so many of you are going to be able to relate to. Okay. It's like, I, I tell Jason, like the only way I can describe it is I feel revved up on the inside. So it's like, even if I'm still on the outside, I'm sitting down, I'm resting, I'm getting ready for bed. I'm still going hundred miles an hour on the inside. And I'm not talking about necessarily my brain. Okay. I'm not thinking about like the meme on social media where you see lots of tabs open on, you know, a woman's brain is 127 tabs. I'm not talking about, I'm thinking about the laundry and I'm thinking about the kids and I'm thinking about vacation. Like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about my inside won't calm down. And on the outside, I, it looks like I'm calm. I'm getting ready for bed. But on the inside, I'm still going hundred miles an hour. Can, can anybody relate to what I'm saying right now? It's like, I'm sitting down on the outside, but I am standing up and running on the inside. And it's a very like disconcerting, it's, it's a weird, I don't even know if it's the right word. It's a weird feeling because in my head, logically, I'm like, Jen, I am literally sitting on the sofa right now, reading a book next to my husband. Why am I feeling wired on the inside? Now, please don't suggest to me it's caffeine. It, uh, no. Okay. Uh, we've. It's not, it's not that. <laughs> okay. Um, this is something that makes like taking a really deep breath, a really difficult thing to do. It's like shallower breathing and it's, it's not, um, anxiety attacks. I don't think it's not, um, panic attacks. Although in the last couple of years, I think I have experienced, um, you know, one or two of those for the first time in my life. I am not someone who has ever experienced anxiety or depression. So like, that is, that is not what I'm thinking it is either. This is like, I can feel almost like it's harder for me to breathe. Um, I sometimes I'll like, when I acknowledge it, okay, I need Jenny need to calm down. I'll realize like my shoulders are all tensed up. I'm holding everything up really high and I'll have to kind of talk myself down. Okay. Lower your shoulders. Okay. Slow down your breathing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and try to get your body to like, relax. And again, I could be just sitting in, you know, the front seat of my vehicle next to my husband driving or something, and I'll still notice that. And so what I believe has happened is that I've been a business owner long enough 
there's been lots of highs and lows, right? So back when I owned the painting company, we had the whole real estate crash of 2008, 2009. By the way, my husband sold real estate um, back in those days. So that was a fun time. But we had several of my builders who went out of business, several of them got divorced, several of them went belly up. And so, you know, that was a really tough time in business. So I've seen things like that, but it's been up and down. And then in the online space, like we've had, you know, incredible launches, incredible awful launches. We've, you know, that's been all over the place too. I've, I've got a best-selling book. We've done this podcast if I say we, I've done this podcast for six years. Like there, there's been a lot, you know, that's happened at work. And um, there was a period when we would launch something new and I, it would be so much fun, you guys, because it was new and it was exciting. I was younger. I could handle the stress more. I just, I just didn't realize until I got older. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So there would be things that I was doing here in my coaching business that had a lot of high stress, but it was also like high adrenaline. And this is back, you know, in my early forties, my middle forties, when I was doing a whole lot of triathlons as well. What I didn't realize is that, um, I had a lot of high stress and high adrenaline with all of the racing I was doing too. Um, you know, they, there was some five K's a couple half marathons. It wasn't that as much as it was the triathlons and the training for that, because I'm not going to get into this. If you read my book, you'll know all about it, but um, I used to not be able to swim. And then I did, uh, took a year to learn how to swim from different swim coaches and then did 10 triathlons in six years. So all of them, you know, in a swim and in every single one of them had a panic attack <laughs> in the water. So when I said earlier, I've never had a panic attack except for in the water. I don't know if it was a panic attack or hyperventilating either way happened 10 times. Okay. What I'm trying to say is this, there was a period of time when that was a lot of fun to, to launch something and to feel the excitement of watching the numbers and people sign up. And, and I really loved like the, just the, mm, oh, it just felt like a baddie. You know, I'm like, this is so much fun. We're kicking ass. Da, da. What I didn't realize is like, it was, it started getting less fun and it started feeling more taxing and things started happening. Like I would start to get what we call the launch flu. So I would launch something, I would go all out and then I'd be in bed for a couple of days. And like, I am not the type of girl who likes to be in bed. Okay. I mean, I, I, you know, in the, I'm a morning girl, you, I wake up, the birds are chirping. I'm ready to get up. I don't like laying in bed for a couple of days feeling awful, but the only way I could describe it, because I would say to Jason, I'm not sick. I just feel like I got hit by a bus. Okay. Who can relate to that? Who right now is doing something in your job that you're like, it's taking a toll on my body. I feel it in my body. <laughs> I feel it in my body. It, I'm not sick. I just like, I feel like I got hit by a bus. That's the only way that I could describe it. Okay. And so of course, you know, Jason takes real good care of me and, and all those things. But what was happening was I was, I was not being able to turn work off. We were going into seasons of high adrenaline book launch conferences, I'm speaking at events. I'm, you know, I've got, uh, people that are very well known on my podcast. I'm, you know, I, I was a moving and shaking. I was making hay while the sun was still up in the words of my grandfather. Okay. But then I just got to where I was unable to turn it off. And I found like, okay, I can't relax on the inside <laughs> when other people are chill. I'm still going. And I can't figure out a way to make my insides stop to match my outside because more than my mind, what I was starting to notice was being more affected was just my physical body. And so now I know enough to know that it all, this has all affected my nervous system and I have to pay so much attention to my nervous system. And so the whole reason I'm going to share everything that I'm about to share is just so that it helps someone else today who you may be heading in this direction, I want you to pump the brakes, okay? If you are like me and you're like, oh my gosh, I was experiencing a lot of those same like physical feelings or the fact that you can't come down. Like, I just, I just want you to know that there's somebody else out there who gets it. I just want to like affirm you and want to give you some thoughts and suggestions on how you can really work hard without going to the doctor, without getting a medication, just to regulate your own nervous system and to just pay attention to your nervous system, okay? Um, so that's the whole purpose of this podcast. All right. So there are studies that show that entrepreneurs are just under more stress than non-entrepreneurs. Oddly enough, it is not 
a significant amount. Like the studies that I were looking at was like three to 5% of are more. Okay. So like three to 5% of people, when they interview entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs, it's only like three to 5% more say they experience stress are entrepreneurs. So it's not a huge thing, but here is what actually happens. Um, when you are an entrepreneur, you have to have extreme levels of self-motivation, self-starting and perseverance. You just do. You cannot start a business, um, run a business, grow a business, scale a business without extreme levels of self-motivation. You are able to get your own butt up off the sofa and go do something. Um, perseverance because things will go wrong. <laughs> um, and so you like, you have to have very high levels of those things. You have to feel quite a bit of passion about the thing that you're doing in order to be able to withstand like the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Okay. So over time, when you have those extreme levels of motivation, of perseverance, um, if you're like me and you're a super responsible person, that means you are still working to get through emails, even when, you know, you know that you should have things turned off for the night, but over time, when you like put all those things with the fact that entrepreneurship is such like a uncertain <laughs> profession. You've got all those things that you like have to be, you know, you, you've got to be semi like aggressive. You've got to be semi competitive. You've got to be somewhat like you think outside of the box. You don't always fit in. Right. And you couple that with just the like question marks that entrepreneurship inevitably bring what happens then is your body goes into a lot of times like chronic stress levels and chronic stress is what can lead you to being in a constant state of fight or flight. Have you guys heard of fight or flight? I'm sure that you have. Okay. So your fight or flight mode, you know, your God wired us to, for us to be, you know, when we sense danger to either fight for our life or to run for our life. Okay. So <laughs> Um, so that's what the fight or flight mode means. Okay. You either fight physically for your life or you run for your life. One of the two. So when you're in states of chronic stress, um, that leads to you being in that fight or flight mode inside of your body, which is then what leads to the dysregulated nervous system, which can then go into adrenal fatigue and adrenal fatigue can take out a business owner and it can take out a whole business. So I told you guys how the other day I was talking to a friend of mine and she's the reason I decided to do this podcast episode. Um, we were talking about how both her and I, and I met her in a mastermind. I just love her so much. We were talking about how we both had to grow up way too fast. We both had to grow up way too young. We both left home at 17. I actually, I, had, I was packing when I was 17. I had days after I turned 18, I left home. Um, and it's because I graduated high school when I was 17, I was very, very young for my class. Okay. So anyway, we both had to grow up way too young. And we were talking about the fact that that was our history. That was our childhood, um, hers for different reasons than mine, but then both of us had experienced like all of you have here as well, just some major life things. Plus coupled with the fact that we are both multi seven figure a year, female business owners, we were talking and just about how both of us are in a constant state of fight or flight. And I didn't realize that for years and years and years, because, you know, in, in my perspective, in my opinion, I'm able to handle a whole lot of stress. I am able to handle a whole lot of pressure. I'm the girl you want in your corner when you have something that needs done and it's 30 minutes to go. I can't even tell you guys how many keynote speeches I have written on a plane to somewhere or an hour before I have to go live or whatever. It's because I work last minute really well. I work best under pressure. So in my head, like I've thought, okay, I've always dealt really well with stress <laughs> until the last couple of years. And I'm like, oh, Jen, you silly girl. Okay. So we were talking about how she has actually, you know, gone to counseling and they've talked about her, be her body being in a constant state of fight or flight. I have not needed to do that because I think th there's nothing for me to like work out. I just, it is what it is. And I, and I know what it is. Okay. The fight or flight response is also known as the acute stress response. And this is so like, it's a physiological reaction that occurs in the presence of something like mentally or physically terrifying. Um, what's interesting is like business is not terrifying, right? 
But we've talked in some of my classes about how like God wired us to um, respond to fear in the same way, whether or not I'm like standing on the edge of a cliff and I feel fear or I'm launching a new course and I feel fear. All your body knows is fear, right? And so um, that fight or flight response is also called the acute stress response. And it gets triggered by like all these hormones um, releasing in your body to prepare your body to either like stay and fight um, or to like run away to safety, okay? So there are so many things that happen in your body when you feel like you're in a, like a fight or flight mode for years and years and years. And um, there's a lot of like physical changes that happen in your body. Um, and it's the body's way of protecting itself from harm. And so if your body is in a state of fight or flight, there's danger, danger, warning, warning. Okay. There's hormones like adrenaline and cortisol that are released into your body released into your blood that then like, if you become like in this state of fight or flight for an extended amount of time, just imagine your poor body is like continuing to release those things. And when your cortisol levels are really high, that's a lot of times where you will store belly fat. It's really bad for your body in some other ways, but, um, it's like high cortisol levels are nothing to play with. And so if you look up like triggers for fight or flight, like chronic stress from life, um, trauma, and by the way, what's trauma for someone may not be trauma for you and vice versa, financial insecurity. Okay. What's more <laughs> entrepreneurship? I mean, that is, that is chronic stress, right? Um, and then you think there's a lot of people who are entrepreneurs who are experienced just like personal trauma or have had trauma inside a business. Maybe you've had a business go belly up. Maybe you got screwed over by somebody. Maybe you've gotten um, uh, audited for your taxes. And so you've got some you know trauma around those sorts of things. And then financial insecurity, I mean, come on. All entrepreneurs are, you know, um, you either have a lot of debt or a lot of bills every month, a lot of pressure to continue bringing in. If you're the primary breadwinner in your home, like there's all sorts of things that play into that, right? So sometimes your body going into that fight or flight mode is really good. Other times when you get into that fight or flight mode and you stay there, um, this can be really physically damaging. It exhausts your body to spend so much time in that heightened state of alert. And again, this is on the inside. Okay. So physically what can happen when you are in an extended period of fight or flight is your blood pressure can go up. Okay. Hello. Um, I have always had really low blood pressure, um, like 90 over 60 blood pressure. My mother still does. God bless her. Um, until I got pregnant with Ava Grace Allwood, who's <laughs> 16. After delivering Ava Grace, my blood pressure had elevated when I was pregnant with her and it never really went back down to normal, normal. But in recent years, my blood pressure has become problematic and, um, I have fought going on blood pressure medication. Um, I have fought it and fought it until about six months ago when I finally did, because what was happening is I was starting to wake up in the middle of the night, um, with blood pressure headaches. And it's never that my blood pressure got scary high, but it's like, way too, it's, it's been in that zone of being a concern. It's pre whatever, you know, high blood pressure, whatever. I can't even think of the word is it's been in that zone for way too long. And so I started like, you know, talking to my doctor and they're like, Jennifer, you know, we don't want you to have a stroke in the middle of the night. And I finally, I was like, fine. So now my blood pressure is very normal. Thank you, Jesus. But like acute stress can lead to high blood pressure, migraines, fibromyalgia, um, chronic gastritis, um, and TA, TMJ symptoms. Anybody else here have TMJ? Are you grinding your teeth at night? Are you, when your body is supposed to be coming down, you're supposed to be coming down in the nighttime, is your insides still rubbed up? That's where a lot of times TMJ is coming from. Your, your jaw is clenching in the middle of the night. You are grinding your teeth together in the middle of the night. And you guys, if you followed me for a little bit of time, you know that about four years ago, I started getting TMJ. I'm like, what the heck is this? Why do I feel like somebody just punched me in the jaw? What's happening with my face? What's happening with my mouth? Not even understanding that it was related to stress. Okay. So when you're in that fight or flight, you know, for a long time, your rapid breathing can go up. Your heart rate can go up. That'll, you know, jack up your blood pressure. So you've got the physical response to stress, but then like emotionally, when you are in fight or flight for a hot minute, you can start to feel emotionally numb. 
you can start to feel like um, you're constantly tired, but you have trouble resting. Who who can relate to that? And so, um, you know, I was going through the notes today. I'm like, how vulnerable do I want to get on this podcast? And I'm like, you know what? If if this is helpful for someone, then I'm just going to go ahead and like share some of my personal experience. Um, you know, which it just it just is what it is in hopes that maybe it's going to help someone else. Okay. So, um, when we're talking about feeling emotionally numb, let me give you an example. Okay. Most of the time I have said, like, I am a soldier emotionally. I have blamed this or not blamed this, but attributed to this, to the fact that I'm an Enneagram three, not that I am like all about the Enneagram, but I think there is a time and a place for, and it's kind of nice just to know how you react to certain things. And so Enneagram threes, um, are, uh, kind of notorious for not wanting to get, um, too emotional about things because we have a lot of pride. Um, we have a, um, you know, uh, we want, we want, we want people to think of us in a certain way. We want to be people that have big impact. And a lot of times we will think about being overly emotional as not a good quality. Okay. So growing up in a home where there were perhaps some overly emotional people, I learned that I had great power in staying very unemotional. I could become very emotionally unattached as a child. I can recall, you know, traumatic things uh, being said to me or awful things being, you know, being shared with me or hearing about experiences and just being able to completely detach, being able to completely detach. Okay. And so I have always thought, you know, I'm just kind of a soldier emotionally. And then when I did the Enneagram test a couple of years ago, I'm like, oh, I mean, Enneagram three, well, that just, that completely explains me being a soldier emotionally. Right. And at times that has been really a gift in my life because there are times when I look at people and I am, I am with people who I feel like are overly emotional and I kind of get nervous around that. I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of that is like, how I was naturally wired by God. Um, and I think a lot of it is life experiences. So at times it has been a real gift in my life that I have not gotten too overly emotional because I have the ability to really shut down emotionally and just keep going and just like get the crap done that needs to be done. Okay. So I left home at a very young age, barely 18. Um, I moved to Kansas city, Um, when I was 19, I, you know, so I was completely then away from where I'd been born and raised. I bought a house at the age of 21. Um, I, uh, lived with someone for almost four years before my husband, Jason. Um, and we had a, uh, very volatile into that relationship, which resulted in my home being emptied out of every possession I owned except for a water bed. Yes. A water bed and a fish tank when I was 22. So I was in a strange city, um, by myself with a mortgage just in my name, but an empty house. Okay. How many of you know, that's pretty traumatic. Um, years later married my gem of a husband, Jason. Um, but our first year of marriage was a hot stinking mess. And we had a ton of issues that we were both responsible for. Um, got married, had a ton of debt that we had to dig out of started a business back in the year 2000. I mean, there were some major things like, just like you have major things. We had a lot of, um, trouble starting a family. We had two different miscarriages. Um, we just, there was a lot there. We tried for a year to get pregnant with Ava. So, you know, those sorts of things are like stress on top of stress, right? Then, um, fast forward many, many years of, you know, working and building the business and building a second business and building a third business. Um, six years ago, we had little Ari, we get a phone call about a little girl who comes to live with us. Um, it was in the month of September, the very next month in the month of October, my very best friend got cancer. And then the very next month, my mom and stepfather, who were our only like, you know, help physically with family, because the rest of my family lives in Iowa, um, became full-time RVers. And, and all of that, like individually, any of those things would have been, um, you know, big. Um, you know, I'm worried about losing my mom. I'm worried about losing my best friend. And then we have a little girl who comes from really hard places coming into our home, you know, and then that affects other people. Okay. So I'm just, I'm sharing this with you, not for any sort of you feeling sorry for me, this, cause you have, this is just life, right? You all, every one of you who's listening right now, like you have a, 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 a bullet points like this too. You have all these things that you could go through that have been huge, pivotal, pivotal, pivotal moments in your life. And so 
some people would just call this, this is just life, right? Um, but it's how your insides react to all those things versus, um, you know, it's how my insides are reacting to all that versus what you're seeing on the outside. That is when our nervous system gets into trouble. Okay. Because shoving down emotions, um, and not being emotional enough and just being that good soldier that only can be used as a tool for protection for so long. Your emotions really are not supposed to be stifled and stuffed for that amount of time. Okay. And so, um, like, let me give you an example. Our pastors always said that people are either, um, stuffers or they're exploders, um, in a relationship. Okay. So I'm the stuffer and my husband would be the exploder. Neither one, you know, necessarily right or wrong. Um, I think probably the healthy place is somewhere in the middle, but so, you know, Jason wears his emotions on his sleeve. You always know where you stand with him. Um, he is going to be the one to tell you like it is. I'm the one that's candy coating. I'm the one that, you know, doesn't like confrontation. So we both just have a very different way of dealing with things. So when it comes to like stuffing emotions, which has been, you know, what has kept me safe, um, at times as a child, which has gotten me through some very traumatic experiences as a young adult. Um, but it also looks like this, like I don't cry when it's appropriate. Um, you know, we've had two boys move out of the house in the last, um, two years. I didn't cry either. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't cry my wedding day. My husband is crying his eyes out, um, at the front of the church. I have not even a tear. Um, my grandmother who I was, she was probably one of the people I was closest to on this side of heaven. Um, I did not cry when she passed away. I did not cry at her funeral. Um, my son just got engaged. Our son just got engaged last week, not a tear. My husband was in a terrible biking accident three years ago. Not a tear. Like that's, that's probably not healthy. Okay. And so Jason and I will have conversations because when I have zero tears, I'll be like, what is wrong with me? You know, he's, he's upset. And I'm like, am I just dead inside? I'm always asking my dead inside. And our joke is you're dead inside. Okay. We're just joking. Okay. But here, here's what I want you to know. Like, this is my fight or flight like response and yours possibly looks very different than that. Um, those, you know, it can look very different for different people, but for me, what the fight or flight response looks like is I just keep going. It's like the modern day version of pulling up your big girl panties and still doing things and just getting stuff done and not allowing myself time on the outside to grieve. And, and what I have realized in recent years is you can either grieve in the moment as things are happening, or you can grieve later, but either way you're going to grieve and, and, and you can either get angry in the moment, or you can stuff it down and that anger will come out later, but either way, there's going to be anger. Do you know what I'm saying? And so in my head, like I've been stuffing for so many years, I mean, at 52, um, and, you know, and then I'm married to Jason, who's the exploders, his emotion comes out um, and I'm keeping everything bottled. And how many of you know that like the body keeps score? There's literally a book called the body keeps score. So I have decades and decades of like emotions just kind of being stuffed down. And when you add to that, the stress of life, and when you add to that, then just the stress of entrepreneurship, um, this is why I think that my body has gotten into a constant state of fight or flight. And this is when your nervous system gets completely dysregulated. Okay. Can anybody relate to anything that I'm talking about? We are not supposed to say revved up on the inside all the time, friends. We're not, we're not because when we're staying in that revved up state, this is leading to like chronic stress. It's leading to high cortisol levels, which is increased inflammation. This is damaging our brains. Um, it's damaging other parts, you know, of our body. Literally, like when you are in that state of fight or flight, you're not thinking clearly. You're so much more easily distracted. I mean, hello. And so, you know, the stress hormone in your body that is the cortisol that I've been talking about. Um, and chronic exposure to cortisol can put us in this like state of hyper awareness of all of our surroundings, which is super like exhausting for the body. And so I actually like looked up the definition of hyper awareness. Cause I'm like, I wonder what that means. Hyper awareness that the actual definition is being unusually or very strongly aware of something, the state or condition of being unusually or strongly aware of, let's say, da, da, da. okay. That's it. being usually very strongly aware of something. Where, where was that? Like consumers have developed hyper awareness of endless advertising. Former, former soldiers suffering from PTSD experience hyper awareness 
or the inability to relax. Okay. So when you're in fight or flight all the time, your cortisol levels are going up, then you've got hyper awareness, which is just inability to relax at any given time. So like, what do you do? <laughs> what, what is the answer? So if you're like somebody that's like, okay, I can relate to this so much. Listen, we have got to be super intentional about rebalancing our nervous systems. Cause that's how we're going to get out of that flight to fight or fight or flight mode. This is how you get your body um, and your mind back to a state where you can feel calm and centered both inside and outside. And so how does one calm down a, a very overactive nervous system? Um, and this, you know, I think you entrepreneurs, you definitely need to like really listen to this because you have to somehow figure out how to calm down. Now, if you were to go to Google and you were to type in like, how do I calm down an overactive nervous system or a dysregulated nervous system? They're going to give you some really great tips. Okay. They're going to give you things like practice deep breathing exercises. So I know that when my breathing begins to get really shallow and like, I've explained it to Jason like this, it's not that I am having, um, like a, like I'm hyperventilating, like I did in the water every time. Okay. But it's more like a, I'm breathing in and out, but I can tell the air is not going all the way to the bottom of my lungs. It's like, it sounds like normal breathing to anybody else, but I know that on the inside, it's going fast. It's like almost like the inside of my breathing and the outside of my body are not lining up. Does that make sense? Okay. So there's some deep breathing exercises that you can do. Um, there's something called like Oh, is it called four, 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 something where you basically, you take a breath in for four seconds, you hold it for four seconds, you exhale for four seconds, box breathing. That's what it's called. Um, you exhale for four seconds and then you inhale for four seconds. So you just keep doing that. Okay. There there's things like that. Um, there's gosh, I meant to look this up for you guys. There's the five, four, three, two, one thing, which is like, um, when you're feeling all revved up, you can try to, um, like notice your surroundings. What are five things in front of me that I can see? Okay. Now what are four things in front of me that I could touch? Okay. What are three things in front of me that I can hear? Okay. What are two things in front of me that I can smell? And what is one thing in front of me that I could taste or what taste do I have in my mouth? Like sometimes that is enough to help regulate some things kind of to come back to normal. Um, of course, spending time in nature is always good. Taking short breaks throughout the day, of course, is good regular sleep. I mean, you, you know, the balanced diet, talk to somebody you trust, exercise, um, weighted blankets, um, which I have, I have all those. Okay. Sometimes the weighted blanket is just hot. <laughs> Can I just say that? Like, yes, it's heavy and it's also hot. Um, it, actually when you like look up, what can I do to calm down my nervous system? There's even some studies that say increasing your fat intake, um, is even a way to help like relax your nervous system. Okay. So that's what you can find like on the internet here. Here's the things that I'm personally doing. Um, I'm trying to step away from business more. I'm trying to step away from social media more. Um, I have been doing a lot more traveling, even if that means I have to travel without Jay. Do I love that? No, but like, we still have two young kids at home. You know, we still got Ava who is not young, but she's 16. In case, in case you didn't know, 16 year old girls need to, you know, some oversight. Okay. And then we've got the little one. Plus Jason's not nearly as fond as traveling as what I am. So I've been going to like our house in Florida by myself on occasion. I've been allowing my team to do way more. They're taking some of my coaching calls, just trying to like get me more out of the day to day because what, what my family and what my team knows is if I can't get myself to calm down, and, and something does happen with my health because of high stress levels. Like, oh my goodness, a bird literally just flew into the window. You know, without me, like they don't have jobs. Without me, there's not a business, right? Because I'm very forward facing. And so trying to allow my team to come in and do more things, so helpful. Um, I've been doing like stretching, especially um, you can look up like trauma-informed, you know, hip exercises. Since my husband has had a hip injury, I am just all too hyper aware now of um, how your hips affect everything in your life. You know, they affect um, when you have an injured hip, it affects how you sleep. It affects how you sit down and drive a car. It affects um, walking. It affects exercise. It affects um, your sex life. It affects, like you use your hips for everything. Just to sit down on the toilet. Like, you're 
you know what I'm saying? That's your hips. So I've been doing a lot of things with hips. Um, I'm really trying to do way more weights and walking instead of steady state cardio. I've given up triathlons altogether. I'm really working on my nutrition. I do, I get a massage every Friday. So like I'm doing all the things, right? But Jason and I have kind of stumbled upon something <laughs> that's better than all those things. It's better than all the, it, it has a way of grounding me unlike anything else. And, um, it's going to sound hokey and it's going to sound weird. And I'm trying to decide if I want to talk about this, you know, I think, I think I'm actually going to break this into two parts because you guys are, this is going to be, and I might even ask Jason to come do the second part with me. Let me know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments, if you want Jason to come on for the second part, let me know if you share this on Instagram, tag me and let me know if you want me to bring him on. But what we have literally stumbled upon that I didn't know was a thing. But in, in the recent years, we have figured out, okay, this is the thing that helps Jen the most. And again, like you would not know this on the outside people. I don't think people like, cause on the outside, I'm calm, cool and collected on, but on the inside, I just can't relax. And so it's called co-regulating or co-regulation. And essentially it's me borrowing my husband's nervous system. Okay. Sounds hokey dokey. It's not. It is um, has been the most one of the most powerful things. Um, as you know, we've been married. Gosh, how many years now? Almost twenty seven. And this has done more for me in the confines of our marriage than I think anything else. To make me feel safe, to make me feel calm, and to help bring my body back to like a more normal state. Okay, so let's break this into two episodes. Let me know if you want Jason to come on with me next time. And we're going to talk about me borrowing his nervous system, what we're like literally physically doing. Um, why does that seem to be working? <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I, I can give you guys some more ideas for some things that you can do. So let me know if you want me to bring him on for that. And um, gosh, I hope that this was helpful at the end of the day. Like I know as entrepreneurs, um, we have a lot of stress. If you're an entrepreneur with a lot of stress, who also has a very basic need of safety, listen, entrepreneurship and safety are not two words that go hand in hand. Okay. If you are an entrepreneur who one of your very basic needs is security, me also. Okay. So safety and security, my two like primary needs, um, those two don't go hand in hand. So there's this like almost this constant rub. And, um, and it's interesting because then there are other parts of, um, you know, my life where it, when things are feeling all out of control at work, or like, I can't seem to make my insides, you know, calm the heck down. Then I like grasp for control in other areas. And so we need to be having this conversation as entrepreneurs, because we've got to get our nervous systems under control so that they're not veering into adrenal fatigue. So we're not like, you know, unable to run our businesses. So. I'm going to need somebody <laughs> to make a comment and say something nice. Um, cause that feels like I might have an emotional hangover here in just a little bit. And, um, cause I shared a lot, I really opened up the curtain for you guys and was really vulnerable. So my hope again is that it's really going to help somebody. So watch for part two. Um, if this comes out on a Monday, part two will be on Wednesday. If it comes out on a Wednesday, part two will be on Monday. Okay. But I'll get it recorded. If you want me to do it with Jason, I will let me know. I hope this has helped. Be blessed. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <sighs> Easton, did I overshare? <laughs>